Hi viewers, I realize that there are so many Montessori materials we've talked about, but we've never talked about one of the most common, one of the simplest ones, which is spooning. Now, anytime somebody comes into a Montessori classroom and they see their children spooning, they're kind of puzzled and they think, what's the big deal about spooning? Why can't I just, you know, why can't my child just be doing this at home? Why do they have to be doing this at school? Why am I paying all these school fees for my child to be sitting there and spooning? I know many of you have thought that and today I'm going to solve that mystery for you. I'm going to tell you why spooning is such a brilliant activity, why children enjoy it so much and what are the wonderful benefits behind it. Neeta, today I'd like to teach you how to do spooning. We're going to learn how to spoon rice from one bowl to another equal bowl. This is the mat, this is the tray, this is the spoon. This is the bowl with the rice and this is the empty equal bowl. Watch me first and then you'll have a turn to try. So Nita, today you've learned how to do spooning from one bowl to another equal bowl. Would you like to try? That was simple to present, isn't it? Now let's talk about what else is the child learning with this activity besides just spooning. Now first of all, I must say that for us it seems like spooning is a menial activity, there's nothing so great about it. But when children do these activities, the practical life activities like spooning and pouring and transferring, it makes them feel important. It makes them feel like they are doing things that the adults do and it makes them feel valued. It builds up their confidence, it builds up their self-esteem. They feel good about themselves. When they feel good about themselves, they approach everything with confidence, be it math, be it language, be it science. So through this simple activity, we're helping to build up our child's self-esteem. And it hardly takes any effort, isn't it? Apart from just learning how to spoon, that means she's becoming independent, learning how to feed herself. She's also developing skills for language. Did you know that? Let me tell you how. Watch the fingers I use when I pick up the spoon. Okay, these are the same fingers I will use when I write. Now a little child who's two years old and starting to spoon, her fingers are not yet strong yet. You may see your children start like this. That's only because their fingers are not yet ready. But don't worry. As their fingers get strong, they will start to hold it like this. And when you see them holding a spoon well, you know that this child is now ready for some writing activities. The problem is a lot of us thrust a pencil into children's hands before their hands are ready. Their muscles are not formed yet, their bones are not strong enough, and when we force them to write, it feels painful. It hurts them, they don't enjoy it, and they start to see writing as a very boring, awful, miserable activity, and they reject it. And then I have a lot of parents saying, my child hates to write. But there's a reason behind it. We're not allowing it to become enjoyable and fun for them. So this will help their fingers to become strong and when they have to hold a pencil, they will feel absolutely ready. Apart from that, their eye and hand coordination is developing. Little children, their eyes and their hands don't work together. They do things like this to begin with. But to do this activity, their eyes and hands have to work together, otherwise they will miss their spot. And this eye and hand coordination, again, is very important for writing. Because when I write, my eyes and my hands have to work together. So this is helping to develop that skill so that when they're ready for the pencil, it will come so smoothly. We also work from left to right. And this is again leading towards language because in English, 
we read and we write from left to right. So children are learning this direction of movement. They're also learning about volume through mathematics. They learn new language when we are talking to them and we introduce the material. So there's a lot of other skills that the child is developing. You'll notice that the children have to concentrate to do this activity. Guaranteed, it only takes about two or three minutes of time. But for a young child, even that two or three minutes of concentration is a lot. It takes a lot out of them. We start with activities that are two or three minutes. As we progress, the activity takes longer and it goes up to five minutes, seven minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But we've got to start baby steps. So this helps them to start building their concentration. Sometimes you will see children repeating this over and over and over again. That's brilliant. Parents get a bit frazzled and they say, why is my child only spooning? What do I do? How do I make her stop? Now remember, if she's enjoying it and her concentration is invested, that means it's giving her some satisfaction. Don't worry. Try to find ways to vary it for her. And I will give you some suggestions in a couple of minutes and make it more challenging. And when she feels she's had enough, she'll move on. Continue to offer her other activities, but don't ask her to stop because it's obviously satisfying some inner need of hers. So let's talk about how we can vary up this activity because, you know, after a while, the same thing might get a little bit boring. So how can we change it up for our children? Well, for starters, let's talk about the contents inside this bowl. Now over here, I'm spooning with rice today. <clears throat> rice is something we would generally use for an older child four years and above. If we use rice for a younger child who's two years old, it doesn't, it's not going to be a very successful uh, setup for you because rice causes a lot of spillage and when the child has to tidy it up, it's very tedious and they get frustrated. Also, it takes a long time to spoon rice. With a young child, we want to have smaller bowls, contents that's bigger and only takes maybe two or three or four scoops max to transfer from one side to the other. So that, first of all, they don't get bored watching you and they also don't get frustrated trying to do it themselves. When you're spooning rice and you get to the very bottom, it's hard to scoop those last few grains and they get irritated, the younger ones. They don't have the patience and the concentration to cope with that. So for younger children, I would suggest using things like kidney beans, red kidney beans, um, bigger pasta. As they get older, you can move to corn, smaller pasta. You can go into uh, green mung beans. We can do black eyed peas. Uh, anything that you find about the household dried corn, all of those things are a good idea for spooning. Another idea would be to maybe change up the bowls. When you see your child is good with spooning from one bowl to another, how about we spoon from one bowl to two equal bowls? So now they're learning about division indirectly. Then we can go to three equal bowls, two unequal bowls. We can put an indicator line inside and the child has to stop where the line indicates. So there are different ways that you can vary it up. You can also change the spoon. This is generally an easier spoon for younger children to hold. You can change it to a teaspoon, to a soup spoon. You can change the colors of the bowls. Uh, depending on the country you live in, you can choose bowls that are reflective of your culture. In Indonesia, we use bowls that are made of coconut wood. Um, you can use spoons that are made of coconut wood. Remember that the minute you change something on your shelf, to the child, it's a whole new activity and they're excited all over again to do something fun and new. So these are some ways that you can make your activities different. Now, one more thing I would like to mention. Uh, there's a mistake a lot of us make. We stop doing this at the shelf. Now, what we need to do is we need to extend this activity into our real life, in our day-to-day -day life. What that means is that spooning should not be restricted to an activity my child does on the shelf, but I should encourage her to eat her own food, to serve herself, 
to maybe when we're doing planting, scooping soil into a bowl. So we've got to find ways not just to do it on the shelf, but to extend it into real life activities. So today we've learned about spooning. I've given you a lot of ideas to get started. We've also talked about some uh, trouble that you might encounter and how to overcome them. So I hope that you will try this out. Share your feedback with us, any struggles or any successes that you've had in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell so that you're notified every time that we upload a new video and you don't miss any of our content. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.